And done with the paint. Man, it does look almost new. Almost new. So, I haven't done it before. So I'm assuming there's a certain order that things needs to get out and get in in order for me to start removing this piece, this piece, this piece, and so on and so forth. Now, first thing, I need to remove the rotor. So this is the screw, one and two. Once you remove those, you'll be able to get this one out. But in order to get this one out, you need to remove the brake or the brake caliper, basically. To remove the brake caliper, these are the bolts that you need to loosen up. You've got one over here and there's another one over there. I'm not planning to remove the brake line because the brakes are already bled and it works just fine. So if I'm gonna remove this banjo thingy, what happened is it's gonna start uh, leaking oil. Well, not oil, leaking brake fluid. And that basically means once I'm done, I need to re-bleed it. I don't wanna do that. Plus, I can work with this installed. Uh, to remove this one, I think I need to remove this metal thing. It has one bolt over here, and there's another one at the back. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there's another one at the back. So, let me start by removing those two bolts, and that will loosen up this piece, so that I can remove this bolt here and here. That clears up the brake. Once it clears up the brake, I'll be able to remove this one. And once I remove this one, this, basically the brake dust cover, I should be able to remove it. I'm not sure if there's bolts at the front or at the back, but we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, once this area basically is cleared up, that gives me extra space in order to work on the control arm, the upper control arm, and all the other miscellaneous things. Okay, I'll take it one step at a time and I'll let you know how the progress works. I'm not gonna be able to put a time lapse because the area is too small, but yeah. First step is gonna be removing this one, removing this one, then removing this one, okay? Yep, we are making progress. This is the brake caliper strapped over here because I don't wanna put pressure on the brake lines and this is the uh, emergency brake line or the handbrake. You, uh, by the way, you kinda need to put it down. Don't engage the emergency brake because otherwise you won't be able to remove this one. So. I learned it the hard way. Uh, two bolts, there they are. Size 12, yeah, 12 mil. Once you get them out, you'll be able to do it. As for the cover, there is the cover, size 10, and you should be able to remove them. There you go, and this is the caliper, this is the other piece, and these are the brake pads. Everything is stuck. I mean, to be fair, it's not bad. The brake itself is not bad. Yeah, it needs cleaning, but I still do have enough pad in it. Okay, so once you remove those two pieces, then you should be able to remove the remaining. Now, you see my hands are dirty. I should have worn some gloves. But yeah, that will loosen up and makes it a bit easier for us. I need to remove this piece now. I need to figure out how. I would assume there should be, yeah, one bolt over here and another bolt over there. I already removed one. I think it's size 14. Yep, size 14. So at the back, one over here and another one over there. And that basically will remove this piece. Once this piece is removed, then we'll have extra access over here. Remove this one. That clears up the space for us. After that, I need to clean up. Uh, let me tidy up, clean up, and remove these two parts. And I'll take it from there, okay? All right, we're making some progress. We managed to remove the rotor with the screws we loosen this one up and this one is just freely playing I jacked up the car well jacked up the axle basically so that the suspension would not basically expand on me because I'm trying to loosen up this one this is a ball, ball joint separator this is the tool with all the things that you might need so what happened is you just line it up, you see the clamps the tied in the tie rod and as you just loosen it up the screw basically pushes this one out and that releases this one. That's the plan. 
let's move on with this one now the reason why it's jacked because once this one is released then this is free so you kind of need to have it in a certain angle as is so that we can put it back once we're done with it at least or oh, that's the theory all right let me try to give it out and see how that goes and just like that upper control arm no more there it is Remember when I told you there are a couple bolts in the trunk that you kind of need to loosen them up? There you go. You just need to basically go here. That's one. This is two. Which size is that? Size 17. And you get them out. Once you get them out, just a couple taps and it's going to fold. Why? Because simply we remove the bolt joint from over here. So that's it. All this drama just so that we can replace this bushing here and this bushing here. That's it. I mean, this ball joint looks like in good neck. Dry, the rubber thingy dry, but still not bad. I'm thinking this one needs to be cleaned up, replaced and all. All this drama that we've done in this side, we need to replicate it in the other side. I still need to do a bit of a more Googling just to find out how am I supposed to be able to remove this one just so that I can get this one out. Uh, this ball joint is gone. Uh, I can remove this one over here. This is for the tie rod. And there is a, another one which is lower uh, ball joint that controls this whole thing or what do you call it? The hub assembly? Yeah, the hub assembly because we might need to replace these ones. I just want to check them out and see how bad or good they are because they might need replacing. And this one, it'll do a good of a cleanup. You see, it's not bad of a job, but it, it takes long. It does take long. All our job now is going to be on this one. First order of business, we definitely need to wash this one because look at my hands. And this is just me getting them out. And this is mostly WD-40, but look at the mess that we made. So yeah, it's always good to start and work on a clean canvas rather than dirty one. Look at those. I don't know, can you see them? Can you see that? Look at the bottom. You're not going to be able to see it from here. Let me just see. Can you see? See? Everything in general, it does look dry, so it definitely needs replacing. All right, there you go. The ball joint here, the lower, this one for the tie rod. And there you go. This is the hub assembly, ladies and gentlemen. It's already removed. We can work at them outside the car. So this is the piece that we need to work on, plus this one. We might need to replace this one, although it does look okay. But then again, you never know. We need to look into if everything is kosher. This is definitely the one that I was talking to you about that is dry, but this is easy fix. And this is basically the sway bar and link and these other rubber bushings that needs to be replaced as well. But so far, I would say we are on top of it. We're on fire and we created lots of mess. Uh, by the way, the ball joint removal tool it's a must for you to have it definitely a must uh, this is the tool that you need to use to get him out now there's another one but it's basically for the bushings to remove the bushings and put them back in uh, it might work, although with the situation and the corners and everything, I highly recommend that you get them. They're on super cheap order now and they're on special, so you can go and check them out for those who's in Australia. Anyone outside Australia, probably try Home Depot or Hop Afraid. Maybe work. Anyways, I'm going to take a break now because I need to clean. Yep. A few moments later. I thought to keep you updated cleaned up this pressure washed it with soap and everything and now it looks almost almost new same with this this and the new parcel tray that we got don't be fooled by the color this is not rust or anything this is just basically the padding from under so it's just yeah discolored that's all 
I cleaned it. It looks spec clean. Let's have a look at it. See? Perfect. And this is Havana. Hello. Yeah, so it's only a matter of leaving it to dry. And even from the back, mind you, even from the back, I cleaned them. Oh yeah, on a separate note, got my car back. They fixed this whole area, so everything was good. Let me show you the control arm, the upper control arm that we got. Well, basically, we washed it. So this is the piece that covers up. This is the knucklehead. Knucklehead. Lull. And this is the upper control arm. See how clean? Now we can work on a clean canvas. That's the whole idea. Sweet. Oh yeah, even the, oh, this is the bushing that I got. I don't know if I showed it to you guys. I think I did. And this is the seal. I washed them. These are the ones that I'm gonna replace with these because these are old and tanned as you can see. So the plan is to replace them. And hopefully we can. In terms of what we have over here, as you can see, yep, we've got plenty of space. This is the tie rod bushing or a ball joint, and it's actually in good neck. It doesn't need replacing, so that's a good thing. Uh, the lower one, it's already on the knuckle assembly, so I'm gonna replace that. The This lower control arm, the bushing over here is good, and the bushing to the back is actually good too. So they don't need replacing. This is the sway bar. I think I'm gonna replace these and these at the back. Uh, in terms of the suspension itself, it's actually in good neck. It needs a bit of a wash, but apart from that, it's actually pretty good. I got black paint, matte black. Because the plan is, once we remove everything out of them, we paint them and put them back and that way they look clean all right guys this is the upper control arm and the plan of attack is loosen these bolts i've already wd-40 uh all of it including even this one just in case because there is a cheaper way of repairing this one uh, by the way i'm using a different camera my gopro just died on me uh, basically just the battery you don't have time to charge it uh, so this is the upper control arm and if you look at the bushing so that yep you can see it's torn which means this one needs to replace now here's how it is you can either remove this one out and replace it which is the ball joint or you can replace replace the whole thing if you can see here there is a different color this is a spray paint. I basically spray painted it black, this area. Why? Because if you look closely, you can see there is an adjustment space. So this is all for the camber, basically, when you do a, a tire alignment and everything. So this one is perfectly aligned. That's why I took a paint over here and just painted it to ensure that this is the length that needs to be uh, out, basically. So if I'm going to replace the whole thing, this piece, then I need to ensure to put it back and bolt it on exactly in the same location. That's why I painted over here. So when I get the new part, I just need to mark it on the same X box, the spot, basically. The other option, I can just simply leave this one and replace that one. It all comes down to the price because this one, I'm trying to find one. It's going to run me down roughly about 50 bucks, whilst this and that is almost 60 bucks. So I figured, what the hell, I'll save me the hassle of removing this one and putting the new one in. That's it. As for this one, well, we need to remove these bolts from each side. Once you remove them, you'll be able to basically as disassemble this. And this is where we can look into uh, cleaning this area, painting it, and replacing the bushings. Okay? Let me loosen it up and tell you how's that gonna go or better yet actually let's just put the camera here and see if i can put the camera for you guys how's that much better right all right now i've already loosened the bolt just a bit to make it easier for me to move it while it's for you guys to see it so this is how it looks okay we just need to keep attention to it because once we get it out there is a certain assembly that it needs to go into 
like there should be some washers and some stuff you see how this is with WD-40 and it's still annoying but anyways it's almost there so let's just get it out see you've got the bolt itself the nut you've got a washer and if you get it out all the way we are going to reuse this see again you've got a washer and this what i need you to remember the bolt gets in from this side this is the left although it has an r for some reason is it yeah yeah this is the right one man we took the right one out not the left one yeah so with the right one it goes like this cool what do we got now since we got this one Ta-da! see how easy now this one I'm planning to clean it up and paint it to make it look proper black anyways but all the bushing all the work that we're gonna do it's gonna be here okay this is the tool that you need this is what gets the ball joint out and it comes with all the attachments that you need now there's an art behind it let me explain it can you see so this is the bushing okay and you see this groove this is something that will stay here sadly I can't get it out when I get the bushing out so in order to get it out what I need is a force or something to push on this down so basically a force to push so that it gets out from here or vice versa whatever it's easier for you so when you put the force from here which is this piece basically this one see this will push onto that pushing it down as it pushes this down you need to ensure that this can get out freely which means whatever the attachment that you're going to use it needs to be big enough to host basically this one so if you look at it it doesn't really matter if the attachment that you're going to put basically it's going to come on top of this groove because this groove is going to remain there at this point at least okay now i don't need to put an attachment or something because this has enough diameter that i can put it like this like so there you go so all what i need to do is just put it like this and start with this and this basically will push the actual ball joint out see it needs a bit of a elbow grease because we don't have air tools so just get a wrench and just wrench the living hell out of it until you can be able to push it that way once this side is done you can do the other side and once we both both bushings are out then at that point we look into how to remove that ring or that inside uh, group okay squishing because that's the only way that we can get this one out see I'm lining it up perfectly so the force from screwing this will push the bushing through this hole out or at least that's a fury okay here goes nothing just gonna hold it tight just so that it wouldn't flip on me or anything and see slowly but surely let me just try something just bear with me all right I got the attachment so now it's good this should be better and easier I just want you to look can you see here pay attention here okay this is basically the bushing and you can clearly tell that it's moving look at my finger look how it's fading away there you go see we're pushing it down okay i had literally had to stand put one feet over here and the other feet over here and i'm not that heavy but we managed to get it out so you just needed to keep doing at it keep doing at it until you get it out so this is the bushing that we don't want we need to replace it with a new one now that we got it out it's only a matter of reversing and get the machine out and just like we did with this side we need to do it in the other side 
What have we done so far? There you go. So this is the one that we haven't moved yet. And now this is the one that we moved. See? Now we remove the bushing, that's true. But we still need to remove this rubber, that's number one. And number two, this groove. This metal groove thingy, we need to remove it because this is part of the bushing itself. And sadly, we were not able to move it as is. Uh, there is a way, I'll show it to you. But first things first, we need to get this one out. Some people burn it. You just burn it and that will get it out. I'm not really a big fan on that. I'm just going to use a normal uh, flathead screwdriver and some blades and whatnot just to get it out. That's it. But before I do that, I'm just going to remove the other side so that at least I'll have both of them ready for me. Okay? It's pretty much the same thing. Whatever we've done over here, we need to do it on the other side. So, let's skip to the second part. Let me tell you something. It's not fun at all. It's absolutely not fun. So, here's what you do. You start by, let's focus, focus, yep, there you go. You start with the saw, I'm using just a normal one. Make sure that it's for metal and you start cutting yourself a groove. The idea is the ring inside, we need to cut it. That way we can use a small flat head screwdriver with a pointy tip and such and just tap on the corner or the groove itself to somehow pry it out. Once you do, it's tedious, it's time consuming, and it requires a lot of elbow grease. See, I'm not even done yet. But I managed to cut it, and because I cut it, I managed to tap it from the other side and get it out. Which is nice. Now all what I need to do is just simply continue tapping it and getting it out. Once I'm done with that side, I need to do this side. And this concludes removing the bushing. After a lot, a lot of hammering, sewing, machines, tools, whatever, you name it, whatever we've got, we tried it out. And eventually, we got it sorted out. Check it out. Check it out, people. This is it. So this is the other piece. Yeah, 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 some might say like, why is it? Well, there you go. You can just easily remove it and put it back. So it's not gonna be an issue. But both of them are removed. And guess what? If you look at it carefully, there you go. I didn't even damage the inside. It just needs a bit of a sand and you're good to go. Well, hmm, this one, slight damage. Yeah, scratch that. Uh, the other one, no. And this is it. So this is the first piece. See how it's cut? That's why I told you you kind of need to cut it. When you do that, the radius becomes smaller, which means it's easier for you to put a flat head inside and push it out. These are the two. Both of them are out. Now what we need to do, sand the inside, sand the outside, clean it up, both of them, paint them, then we can apply the bushings on them. As for the other one, remove those two bolts, get that piece out, wash it, clean it, paint it, then I can get a new one installed, put the bolts and put this one on top of it. And this is how we finish the first part. Hmm. One down, three more to go. Yay! Okay, quick update. There you go. Washed, cleaned, wet sanded, cleaned even from the inside. And as you can see, I'll put some masking tape from the inside because at the end of the day, the bushing will go through that. So that should not be painted. And also the bolt itself, I've taped it in both sides. And now, primer waiting to dry in order to apply the matte black. Good progress. And done with the paint. Man, it does look almost new. Almost new. All what I have to do now is just wait until it's completely dry, check it out, remove the masking tape, and pretty much I'll be good to go to apply and put the bushings. Look at it, man. Sadly, 
whatever we've done now, we kind of need to do it three more times. A few moments later. All right, quick update. Uh, I went and pursued for some parts, and you know how rare the parts are, so I ended up in the Shangri-La in Sydney. Don't ask me why, stuff happens. So, quick update. Yep. You can't find no parts in here, I know that for sure. But I figured, since I already made it this way, might as well just enjoy. So this is the room, and this is the view, and... If you can see over there, I don't know, can you see it? Yep, that's the Sydney Opera House right over there. Now, if my calculations are correct, probably I'll find some parts over there. I need to go there, find the parts, and report back. If not, oh well, I've seen the Opera House again.